Um, you said you were doing vocal warm ups. What, what, what is that? What are your vocal warm ups? Oh, that's like. That's like to prepare the voice. <laughs> um, are you a singer of sorts? Yeah. Yeah. Is, I do it for fun. You do it for fun. Okay, so um, that, so that would be. Is that. So that's not your vocation. Yeah. I like that warm up. How did you. What did you do there? So you basically just like squeeze your cheeks and then you just blow air out and you go up the scale, up and down the scale. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Your, what is your vocation? Um, I am about to start working as an ESL teacher. An ESL teacher? ESL teacher. What's ESL stand for? Um, English as a second language. Oh, nice. So you're going to be teaching people English? Yeah. Um, and is it where? Where at? Um, there's a language school here locally, but the really cool thing about it is that there's just such huge demand that I could pretty much choose anywhere in the world where I want to go and teach. So that's like the cool thing about it. Now, is this a certification, this ESL? Like, is this like the main certification or the most credible <coughs> certification one can get as a English teacher or something? I, I, you said that like it's, it may be in like that a lot of people know about that. I speak Albanian and um, Spanish as well. Wow, Albanian and Spanish. How'd you find out about like breaking normal, hon? Um, I think it's like Instagram. Um, I follow like JP and like that whole crew. Okay, when you say JP and that whole crew, what's that whole crew? Um, like his girlfriend, and then you, and then your wife. Um. And I, I saw like Kyle C's come into the mix and I thought it was like super cool. Cool, yeah, yeah. I, went, I, I got to go to a Kyle C show with JP, which really marked like a whole new chapter in my life in a way. It was very fascinating. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed meeting Kyle. But JP and I have been friends for a while. I love JP. Cool, cool. So yeah, I these calls I've done. You know, I, I, I love the creative constraint of eleven minutes. We're at four twenty right now, um, and I love yeah with that, the context also of a communication beyond limitation, and sometimes not knowing either parties knowing where we're going, but we end up finding ourselves there, and it's so fun. It's like life. What about you? Do you feel like any lim limited in any way? I mean, I do, but I, I kind of, like, I try to do my best to just, like, tr like break free, you know, whenever I feel that, like, tightness or, like, the shackles, it just, like, you know. Yeah, you seem pretty, uh, you seem very calm and centered. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Um, like, I wouldn't even be surprised if you are uh, smoking hash or cannabis or even on like a sedative or like a, even like an anti-anxiety medication of sorts. I'm, I'm on absolutely nothing. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Either way, I have, have other people told you stuff like that? Sometimes I like to, uh, and me also in this context, sometimes there's like someone can go around the world and 99% of the world might be judging them about something specific or forming an opinion about them, but they feel it's taboo to talk about it. So that person sometimes hears about it so much more rarely than I would imagine. So has, does that something that people tell you? Like, like, are you high girl? Or are you stoned? Or like, <laughs> what, how are you so calm? No, I mean, people do tell me like, you know, you have a very zen vibe and you're very calm, but they don't tell me like, are you high? No. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually how I would describe my my first gut and intuition was that is that you are very zen, like I said, calm, centered, zen. We can call that. And I was like, you know, so that's so it's very taboo for some people to admit um, what kind of medication they might use, uh, whether it's if they consider a coffee medication, coffee or cannabis medication, or like antidepressants or anti anxiety, because there's so many people that are on those pills 
that I am just amazed it's not more of a common conversation. Right. Yeah, yeah I mean, I definitely um, did smoke marijuana for a while. And then it kind of just um, just left my life. And now I, I don't really feel the, the pull towards it anymore. Um, I have, you know, also experimented with, like, magic mushrooms and ayahuasca and things like that oh and ayahuasca wow did you go did you go yeah. somewhere to do ayahuasca or did, were you in the united states when you did it no i did it here awesome in the states wow yeah. how would you describe your experience with <laughs> we have four and a half, i know i don't know this is funny what we're talking about but it like what, <laughs> what would you say in like a 30 second version the difference between cannabis uh mushrooms and ayahuasca are for you I would say, for me personally, mushrooms has always been an, an enormous outpouring of bliss and love. Ayahuasca has been more therapeutic, more like releasing demons and anxieties and all that stuff, and a lot more tears and uh, stuff like that. As far as cannabis, has been more like sedative, more like chill, like calm down good time cool and then what do your parents do or where are they at what's what's going on with them in another 30 second nutshell well i actually live with my parents cool. so they're around yeah they're they're in my life and what's their vocations um they so they they work in the city because I, I live close to manhattan so they work um in like buildings like my doors my dad's like a doorman Cool, and your mom, your mom does something similar, or? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you see, you're very fast. This is a very different vibe than a lot of the calls I've had, and I'm happy, I'm very happy. I could say that for everyone, but this one in particular is more, I feel like I'm uh, catching up with you or something. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, you know, I was thinking, I was like, oh my God, I better come up with a problem. I gotta fix something, you know? And then I was like, you know what, why? Like, I, if it's not coming up, I'm not gonna make something up. <laughs> exactly, that's the main issue, I think, with uh, talk therapy or going to see someone like a psychoanalyst or a therapist or, because it's almost as if anyone can create a problem about anything. And um, that's why sometimes I think, like some, some people, they really, or would be very well served, like like a Jung, like a Carl Jung type of analyst, someone that like identifies with breaking down the archetypes and finding the root cause of a certain behavior and a certain pattern. I mean, some people, I'm like, that is, you've done enough. I mean, you're just creating. Now it's it's not it's like so hard to tell what's even true and not true anymore. It's like that person might just want to go for a run or a surf or. And go scream or go sleep or go get drunk and forget about everything. You know, it's so funny how I, I'm happy you brought up the point that you were tempted to come, like, have a problem to talk about. But I'm not sure how, uh, sometimes when naming something, it becomes that much more real. And if it's not there, no need to make it, make it up. Unless it's unless it's something that you want, and it doesn't sound like <laughs> sounds like you're pretty good with the, the little the little amount of problem or opportunities that you have <laughs> or had. Um, I've come to a point where it's like um, I'm more in the present now, and and more in just gratitude and um, experiencing the moment and every. When, when I don't have anything to think about, I'll just like focus on like the leaf of a flower or something and just, you know. That sounds pretty wise to me. And that we are actually, that was 11 minutes already. I, um, I, I'm gonna add, I think that group that you requested access to, I'm gonna add you to that now. And we have a, man, there's so many exciting things happening. One thing, we have an app for the Breaking Normal book coming out. And I'm not exactly sure how we're going to release it, but we do want to release it to some people for Christmas so they can play the game with their families. So definitely uh, keep an eye on that group. I know. I'm, I'm pretty, that's why I'm like, this call kind of caught me off guard. I'm like, oh, what's up? How's, how are you doing again? I'm like, I don't know if we've ever talked, actually. Um, yeah, have you thought about coming to Maui? We still have space for Maui. 
Someone just signed up right before this call, actually, so that's on my mind. Whoa. That wasn't you, was it? I, I was almost wondering if it was you, because Timothy said it was a girl. And it was like, wasn't me. Okay. Well, if that interests you, it's January 4th to the 8th, and you need to check out the website, International Tribe Design. I would love. That's where JP and Amber actually met. The one in uh, Costa Rica. And they met in Costa Rica. And then, and then he proposed to her at Montana. Hey. Run, Guan, Guan, Guan. Run, Guan, Guan, Guan. Run, Guan, Guan, Guan. Run, Guan, Guan, Guan. Run, Guan, Guan.